I was maybe Oops. fourth grade. And to my mother's credit, she was uh, volunteering at the school. We had a chameleon. And I don't know if you guys have ever like been with a chameleon in real life, but to me, this was the coolest thing that could possibly be a thing. And he would really change colors. Like, that works. They do that shit. And it, I think, in my head, that's how I remember it. And uh, they needed someone to take the chameleon home for the weekend. And that was, they were going to do that. Let all the students take it home. Like, you know, me, you, this weekend, that weekend. But you had to have parental consent. My mom was right there. And I'm like, mom, can we? With all my hopes and dreams. And she said, yes. So we brought that chameleon home with us for the weekend. And I couldn't have been happier. Like I'm just laying on my belly outside on the deck, watching the chameleon do nothing for ages and ages. And I guess that wore out. So I left him on the deck because where else would a chameleon be happier than outside? Well, it turns out it doesn't take that long for a chameleon in like a plastic cage <laughs> cook. He still in the cage. <laughs> yeah, he's cooked and like there's no water in this thing. It looked like it, like I had shish kebobbed him and spun him over a fire. He was so he was he was <laughs> he couldn't have been deader and more grotesque. And, That's and so funny. this is so much worse than what Wings did to that cat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a chameleon. <laughs> I think it's the exact same thing. Yeah. It's the exact same. Ex it it's the exact same thing. Just less fluid. How old were you? fourth grade so that would have made me like nine ish that's an excuse okay. good good because yeah. if you'd been like oh, this was last year i'm gonna be honest it wasn't my classroom it was it was collins and it got <laughs> all right nah. I, I thought the camille was cool it could have even been second grade i just know the school so it was one to four yeah did you guys ever have like class pets is that like it was this a class was a pet? class well okay. we had one briefly <laughs> we had <laughs> one but like you know how uh like in grade school, we had a class pet, but it wasn't like stayed in the same classroom. It'd be like, all right, uh, uh, who's going to take Gary the hamster home? Uh, and then he'll be right back with you uh, in, for fourth grade, too, or whatever the fuck. And it was like a third grade. And everybody's like, me, me, me. And I was like, I, I don't want to. I don't want it. I've got dogs. And so uh, <laughs> I don't want your shitty pet. <laughs> I don't want your shitty fucking pet. What was it again? Like, Hamster. It was like a gerbil or a hamster okay. or one of those shitty little animals that doesn't do anything. And <laughs> this girl, Anna, was just like, please, please let me take it home. Please. Just like freaking the fuck out. And you know that a kid is freaking the fuck out when another third grader is like, <laughs> cool your jets. <laughs> <laughs> Settle down. It's all right. And they're like, all right, Anna, Jesus Christ. You can do and so uh, <laughs> Poor Anna. So she, 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 she took it home. And for the summer, you know, I wasn't friends with her. Girls were icky at that age. And so mm. Uh, get back. I didn't give a shit about the hamster, but a couple other kids in the class really cared. And we're like, they're on the first day, like, where's Gary? Where's Gary? Is Gary here? And then, and then Anna came in. No Gary. Oh. <laughs> and, and they're like, they're, I was like, Anna, where's Gary? She's like, Gary, Gary died over the summer. <laughs> and, then, and like, she literally, there were a couple of people like, bullying the shit out of oh. her for a while because dumb bitch anna can't keep gary alive for a summer really really so, no you want oh you want to play four square you play, no we don't play with gerbil killers we play, I, i'm we glad play you take care of animals i'm glad you said that because that was that's what i wanted to ask woody what happened when you went back to school with that shish kebab roasted chameleon okay did you get another well, we did not bring the evidence back to the school. Uh, I, I think that Dick is right. The school or teacher or something quickly replaced it. I explained that it died. I don't know if I went into the detail on how grotesque and painful that death must have been. And there really were no social ramifications. There was no big fallout. Wow. Did they replace it like with the lizard that didn't change color? So some a little bit cheaper? <laughs> I, I think it was another chameleon. But it, we also... If I have my history right, it's been a long time. I think we switched to growing lima bean plants too, and that was the new class interest. Cool. Did you well, ever do they that? had to. They right had now. to. Yeah, it was right. a budgetary issue after you roasted the chameleon. <laughs> well, what's your class? I don't know what we're going to do for biology, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> the Woodworth boy, he took it home and tortured it to death. His mother told me all about it. <laughs> I know she's scared too. We yeah. uh, <laughs> all are. Uh, I love Dick, that. What were you saying there about the the class? Pet? I said I have a class pet right now. My girlfriend's a teacher. Today's her last day of school. I could see this one coming about a mile away <laughs> because 
when she was getting all of the hermit crab shit that her class has. Like I've never, I've only seen children that excited. She's getting the cage, <laughs> special ordering sea salt and like a background. She's like, oh, this will be like his little home. I'm like, okay, uh, this is for the class, right? This is for the children. This isn't for you. All right. <laughs> Um, so sure enough, a couple days ago, a uh, text comes in. Hey, uh, is it okay if I bring the crabs home for the summer? Like, How yeah. many? Uh, there's two in there. Oh. And they're, they're active at night. I don't sleep at night so well. So now in the other room, I've got what sounds like the aliens from Signs clacking. All, like, they love climbing <laughs> the side of the tank. They love climbing the side of the tank, which means they cram their claws into the cracks and like scale it up uh, for no yeah. reason. And they just sit at the top and then they drop, they fall in the morning. So all night it's like, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like honey, she's sleeping like a log. I'm like, uh, I don't know if these crabs are going to make it back to school. <laughs> 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 fall. They probably won't. <laughs> like, I, I'll tail heart one night. Like, ah, they just, they finally escaped. I don't know what yes. to tell you. <laughs> I, I used to sell hermit crabs on the Jersey Shore. And as such, I became kind of an expert on them. And I got into <laughs> them. And I brought hermit crabs into my house, too. Everything he's saying is exactly true. The nocturnal, <laughs> the clicking, the clacking, etc. But I will tell you this. No matter how much love and affection you pour into a hermit crab, they will still pinch you. They never become friends. They never learn to oh. like you. Don't kid yourself. Here's the best part. The reason she brought them home early is because she said they were they were terrified in class because the <laughs> kids were so loud. And I said, "What the fuck is wrong with you? What are you saying? Go outside and try this again with some real with real human." <laughs> Real adult thought, what are you talking about? And she goes, well, the kids would get all amped up. they come in and screaming, and then I look at the crabs, and they're in their little house shivering. I'm like, honey, that doesn't work on me if a person was doing it. It definitely doesn't work if a fucking crab is doing it. I promise you that they're not afraid of the children. They're just sleeping uh, all day no. while the children they're, are there in their homes. Yeah, they're, just, they're, they're, they're not dumb shivering. Animals. No, they don't they're shiver. Like Anne Frank, <laughs> in their little halls, the giant kids are stomping around. You idiot. No. Well, she but sounds good-hearted, though. No, it, it is funny that you brought that up, that your girlfriend was so insistent on bringing him home, because I have something similar recently, uh, which my my girlfriend was like, oh, I, I get lonely when, when you're not home. I get lonely. Uh -oh. I, I prefer it when you're here. Can I get a dog? Can I get a, a cat? And I was like, first, I was, I, I've always had a hard and fast rule of no cats. No cats at all. She, she tried yeah. to sneak one in once where... Uh, she had one on her parents' farm or something, and and they were gonna they were gonna sell the farm or something. And she's like, "Well, the the cat needs a place to go. The cat it's the cat farm. needs a place to go." And I'm like, "Well, it's a cat. It can eat things outside. It can survive. It's fine. It's an outdoor cat now. It can remain an outdoor cat." She's like, "It just it, it wouldn't have to stay permanently. It wouldn't have to stay permanently with us. But if we could just watch it for for a little while." And I was just like, "No, no, no cat will ever enter this home." And I'm still, I still say no on the dog thing for now because I don't want to deal with it. I just bought a new house. I don't want a bunch of sh shit all over my furniture. But, and so I got her all the way down. And so one day I get home and she had gone to Petco and bought like a light up habitat with like colored beads at the bottom and then just a beta fish. And I'm like, mm. does this actually, you feel less lonely when I'm not here? <laughs> Because this, so you're telling me that this fish, which doesn't even swim around the habitat that you bought for him, it just looks at you with dead fish eyes. That has the same presence that I do. It keeps you from being lonely. It's like, like, and now it's just another thing. Eventually, I'm going to forget to feed him. I've never remembered. The only time I remember is when she goes, hey, feed Frankie. On text. Yeah, that's a trap, because then when you forget to feed him, you've got to double down and get her something to make up for the loss of you and Frankie. It, I mean, you guys are such raid. lightweights, right? Like, like Dick's girlfriend brought home a hermit crab. Taylor's girlfriend brought home a betta fish. And mine brought home a live human baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can end up like Woody. <laughs> you know what a good right, mid-ground is, Taylor, for you, I think? What's that? Ferret. Oh, no. Ferrets are fucking possum. cool, dude. No, not a possum. A possum. Is disgusting. <laughs> they have Bro, human hands possum, and they eat the thousands no, of ticks. You're thinking of a raccoon. No, I, I, I thought possums have human hands too. No, you're both lunatics. No, you don't. You don't want too. either one of those animals in your house. You want I, a raccoon I, hanging out? You want to Dude, know something? I'd love a raccoon. You know my friend, out. the one that dresses up like a clown. 
Yes, the one that I've reported 18 times <laughs> now. To the every time I meet with the feds, they're like, "Is there anything you want to tell us?" He kept a possum about? for years. I'm like, "Well, I know this one guy. <laughs> this one <laughs> that possum. <laughs> he'd be driving with it. He'd be yeah, possum. Wait, the guy who dressed up as a scary clown with like it's tattoos in his knuckles. Possum owner. Had a pet possum. Yes. No, I'm sorry. I just dressed I, up like a clown. It's because he wants to scare people. He's just awesome. to be clear. Just to be clear, because because you mentioned that. The possum is the thing with the naked tail, and it's, it walks on all fours, and it has the long snout with the little beady eyes, and it's got lots of sharp teeth. Scary teeth if they're showing them. Okay, just making sure we're, t- we're actually talking about an opossum. Um, I would like a raccoon. I've watched some YouTube videos of people who have pet raccoons. They usually name them Bandit. And uh, they're really cute, and they'll go and like turn the sink on and get themselves some water and like climb around their little habitat and you know they got those little people hands and they, they're incredibly intelligent but the ferret the ferret shits and it's like oh look there's a little little cocoa crispy like right right there a little cocoa pebble there i can just tip, 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 scoop that right up it's you know it doesn't shed it when it dies it's just it fits right in a pringles can right you know you just you just <laughs> <laughs> you know what how you, you kill stuff like that have you ever ferret? euthanized a rodent yeah, you pet up like like um. I knew a girl who has multiple ferrets, like two, and to like watch her on her like Instagram or whatever playing with them, it looks like a great time. Like they're very rambunctious and active, and so they're just like running around like like get, they get like the zoomies like like puppies will, and they're just like running around her and and like jumping through little hoops and stuff, and they're just like going on their belly like rub be- on their back like rub my belly rub my belly and she's just like yeah rub your belly and he's just like yeah and then he'll jump up and run a little bit more they're very cute when my daughter was younger she used to keep rats or as the pet store calls them fancy rats and uh they were incredibly expensive it, it like it <sighs> the rat would be like eight dollars <laughs> And then the rest of the tools you need to maintain a rat, the cage, this, it, it would threaten $1,500. You're shitting me. What? No. no this is to what happens when in? people go shopping it's without me. Rat. We're rat people now, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> We're rat, dude, rats will live in your house for free. <laughs> you have to pay to get rid of them. They live about two years, which is my favorite part of rat ownership. It's not a huge commitment. You know, <laughs> some would go 18 months. And uh, it would be, I was always the one that had to kill them. And the way you do it is you go to the grocery store, you buy one of those styrofoam disposable coolers and yep. some dry ice. And apparently it's a fairly pleasant death. You know, you let the dry ice cool the environment, put the rat in. Five minutes later, it's just a you permanent don't drown the rat. CO2. Now you I need to buy ra- dry ice. I hadn't and- considered the CO2 angle. I thought he f- just hypothermia to death. So, so, so no, let me I picture this well. Like, like gas. the dry ice, he, you don't put him directly on the dry ice. No, though, right? it's, it, it, there's room for dry ice and a rat to exist at the bottom of this thing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's, if it's, he can move, he's not, you're, you're killing him. You're not putting a dead rat in there. Yeah. He's freezing <laughs> to death before the CO2 poisoning. Yeah. Oh. Um, you know, you could also just stomp on it real hard. You know, that's, that's probably not that cheaper. inhumane. Uh, it is to your p- fucking shoes. It makes a goddamn <laughs> mess. But um, we got I've that from the a lot internet, of rats. So. Yeah, yeah, I've killed a lot of rats. A lot of I'm different trying to think of other weird animal stories. I t- I've told the one Chemicals. before about when we babysat that other person's bird and it killed itself. Right? <laughs> my, 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 my sister had a pet rabbit that killed itself. Yeah, how did it kill itself? Uh, it hung itself. That's how this one killed itself. This bird got its little neck caught in those like yep. those bars at the top, making a hell of a noise, and then it stopped making noise. And I remember sleeping in the other room. Like I'm like I'm like nine, ten years old. And I'm like, thank God that shit ain't shut it the fuck up. <laughs> then the next morning, you walk in there and this like expensive parakeet. You know, they stressed how expensive the bird was. It's like you first of all, you're fucking tarred for buying a expensive bird. And it killed itself, and the kid was so sad. Birds are the opposite yeah. of fancy rats in that they live incredibly long. Probably most people know, but like a parakeet goes like 25 years. And the bigger ones, like a parrot or a cockatoo, they last 70 or 80 years. They, like, you need to put it in your will and find someone else who wants a parrot. Yeah. Remember, uh, you ever seen, we've, we've all seen Rocky with Sylvester Stallone. Remember how he had the turtles that, that like he, he, would, he would go back to his apartment and he'd, like, he'd, he'd practice the jokes he was going to tell Adrian on the turtles. He'd be like, yo, you're the turtles, and we live in a little, little jar here. And then maybe. 
he still has those goddamn turtles. They live with him. <laughs> those turtles are like 40 or something That's like that. That's pretty good animal husbandry to keep little turtles alive that long. Yeah, I think he's I the think one. The term, right? Have you guys ever like, got really close to shit in your pants driving? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, I, I've done that. Of course. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I, I've never shit my pants, but I've told the whole story about like ruining that bathroom in Florida where, where I, it was that or shit myself. And, uh, <laughs> and I just didn't make it. And, you know, I got in and it, it was just like, I have to shit this moment. But the toilet seat was just covered in piss, so I just pointed my ass at the toilet and I, I, I let it rip, and and it was just it was just the worst thing of all time. It was so bad, you know. You you go through life seeing those shit stained toilets in, in gas station bathrooms, and you're just like, what degenerate fucker <laughs> would come in here and disrespect the place like this? But then. Uh. Then one day you become that person, <laughs> like like you. What what's the thing you you either um you either die a hero or live long enough to see <laughs> become a villain. <laughs> I lived long That's enough to see myself appreci- become. <laughs> I love the application of that quote. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just like it's either and, and keep in mind I got eight more hours left on this drive. It's not like I can just like waddle into a Walmart and get some new underwear without being incredibly humiliated. So it's <laughs> Is your underwear ruined wanna... at that point. No, no, I haven't shit myself yet. That's the thing. Like, like, the option is shit myself, sit in piss, or ruin this toilet. And I chose option C. <laughs> I yeah, haven't I shit myself since high school, I don't think. That was awful. I've, but... I've got a really oh, wow. good record going of, of not <laughs> shitting myself. The, like, maybe this is recent. This is maybe like six weeks ago. I, I was leaving somewhere that was like 20, 30 minutes from my, from my house. And... I had that feeling of like, ooh, I'm getting rumbly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to poop really bad soon. It was one of those days where I didn't have a morning shit, and so it was, you know, it's later at night, and I was like, I, I want to poop in my own house. I want to poop at, at this person's house, mm. and so get in, and I start driving, and I get like, 15 minutes into the drive, and there's an enormous amount of traffic for an accident, and I, it would, was, I was getting so close to shitting my pants that I went from the, you can pull off at a gas station. Oh no, you can't make it through there right now. Fuck. Uh, you know what? I bet, I bet this happens to a lot of people. <laughs> I bet that, I bet that a lot of people poop their pants driving sometimes. <laughs> you know, this probably, if I do poop my pants, it's not that big. Of a, but then once I got like on the last open road of a few miles to when my house, this? like this was like six weeks ago. So you had your and, new car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I and I got on like this straight away, like like on the final road to get to where my house is, and it's like some hills, like a little hilly, and the speed limit's only like thirty five or something. And I got up to like eighty ish, like if I, it was so reckless and dangerous, going over these hills, almost <laughs> catching air, trying to get home. Like I, I could have died. I would have fucking died if I had hit a deer, if I had run into another car, a kid could have run out in front of me. I didn't care. I had to poop. If you'd seen the blue lights, you'd have pulled over and immediately just got out, ran over to the side, and shat. Because you wouldn't have had time to explain to him how I bad you I wouldn't have stopped. Poop. That'd be the I first. Would've, I would have kept fucking going. I would have got home, ran inside, and been like, I surrender, but I got a shit. And then <laughs> I'd run in, and then they'd... they'd oh. I like to think of Taylor squatting, pooping, and being tasered all at once. <laughs> I'm just sitting there. Oh, stop <laughs> resisting! Stop resisting! You call nine one one like you got a hostage in the car. I'm yeah. not pulling over for any reason. It's <laughs> <laughs> a dangerous individual. The last no, time the last I shit my did, pants yeah. in my car, um, it was I back when I had the a Lexus. I got a truck now. Uh, had really nice leather seats, so. I felt it coming. Um, I felt it squeeze past the goalie and thought, oh, well, fuck. Here goes, here goes this car. I might as well just steer it into the um, steer it into the concrete because <laughs> yeah. I can't, I will never not be able to smell this. Uh, and I remember bowing myself like, you know, off the seat as soon as I felt it squeeze past, like, uh oh, nope, no, 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 no. Nope. <laughs> and I'm driving, like, I'm driving holding myself propped up on one foot. You know, but my core isn't that strong, so I know I only got a. I only know I got like a ninety seconds to take care of this. I start grabbing garbage. I'm one of those guys that just eats all the time in the car and then throws the bag in the passenger seat, and that's the trash. Yeah, I'm that so, kind of guy too. I hate being yeah. that guy. Yeah, I just grabbed it <laughs> and started that shuffling passenger. it under me. <laughs> so I ended up halfway to home, just sitting on like a mountain of garbage, like that guy in Fraggle Rock driving, <laughs> like I'm sitting on a. Uh, telephone book 
uh, <laughs> and constantly like checking fruit fruitlessly. I don't know what I thought I was going to fill, but packing it in in the hopes that it would absorb it. I guess my own kitty litter box is what I ended up sitting on. <laughs> How far away were you from home? Like 20 minutes, a, lo a long way. Uh, and that's when I gave up drinking. Uh, <laughs> one of the times I gave up drinking. I don't think I've had any bathroom issues since the last time I was on your guys' drinking show. Have you really given I, up drinking? Uh, or is that uh, I give it up all, all the time. You know, I gave it up a long time ago. I, there's, I've had a couple, uh, probably a couple hundred relapses <laughs> since then. But the important thing is I wake up every day and congratulate my, myself for, you know, giving it up and hmm. coming to terms with my alcoholism. <laughs> What's well, one day at a time, Woody? One day at a time. That's what we <laughs> said. the bad guy. Yeah. I, I <laughs> yeah. was One interesting. day at a time. Uh. <laughs> Man, that oh. sucks. <laughs> How many times have you shit yourself in the car? Oh, God. More than one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not fair because it's L.A., so you have to drive everywhere. You know, I can't just – you. if you're walking, you, you don't say you shit yourself walking. You just run into a bathroom. But there are three ways, 20 ways, 20 minutes both ways. You're fucked. Yeah, that's, I, I, that's none of us live in a place where you can just walk around. Maybe Taylor does. I don't know. But <laughs> no, I don't. I was trying to make him feel better about his shit. <laughs> yeah, like, like there's no one who's listening to this right now in L.A. Going like, yep, I shit myself all the time. Dick's spot on. <laughs> <laughs> <All the time. laughs> uh, you get drunk, and then the next morning you're driving home and you shit yourself. You know that's, oh, yeah, uh, that's yeah. part and parcel of living in the city. Pretty normal. <laughs> <laughs> pretty normal for LA, man. That's why we got the typhus. Uh, I, I like myself. that our like, you know, hey, I know we'll start off asking Dick how he's doing. Led there. Segway to a topic. Sure. Alabama has approved chemical castration for some sex offenders. Lincoln Cunningham. Ooh, what, what kind? does PKA think about this? Uh, certain sex offenders, I did pre-read this. It applies to certain sex offenders convicted of certain crimes. Yeah, thanks. Involving children under 13. Uh, yeah, I'm cool with that. It's a, an injection that blocks testosterone production. Does it work? Yeah. Uh, all, all that chemical castration does, it just makes it so that you have zero sex drive anymore, right? But is it about the sex? Like, is this... Uh, it seems like they're saying this is a... Is this a fix for pedophilia, or is it a weird sexual punishment? It's a fix for pedophilia, except for that one guy who's like, I never liked fucking the kids. I just liked hurting them. Yeah, <laughs> that's just a murderer. Yeah, why do people... No, I like to fuck them to death. That's my thing. <laughs> Oh, I, can't do I never anymore. even thought asked the question that Dick asked. Does it work? Like you to take away your sex drive? That's the engineer are, in me. Are, are, are pedo sex drives driven by T like normal reproductive sex yes. drives? Yes. Yeah, I mean it. It is a sex drive. Like I, I think I see it more of like the sex drive. That's the motor, and then it can go in any given direction. Like maybe you're okay. a pedo, maybe you're straight, maybe you're gay. But you get rid of you shut that engine down. You're not going down any of those roads. I wouldn't think. No, but you're there walking. are other downsides to this that are just inhumane, like muscle loss and chubbiness. Muscle loss. <laughs> oh, the pedophiles can't get ripped. <laughs> yeah, oh. you gotta take their oh, team. You can't... Yeah. Oh. No, I. I mean, it. It'll be hard pressed to get me to empathize with someone fucking, you know, eleven year olds. Of all people, I'm I a... thought you'd empathize with muscle loss, it. like you understand the value. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of these guys are pretty spindly. Or that's yeah. what I picture when I picture a pedophile. Either really big fat or like little little weasel. Yeah, I don't I, want the government tampering with brain chemistry to stop crimes from happening. They could stop before they do that. No, as much as... Go ahead, sorry. I, I'm okay with it. I, I think that um, I, it, it's currently, I think that there's often situations where a convicted pedophile has that option. They can be like, all right, you can continue your prison sentence or we can... You can you can take this medication, which is going to block your testosterone, and you'll no longer want to have sex with kids, and you're probably going to mild bout of depression. You've you've seen a Beautiful Mind, right? Well, no, that's not Beautiful Mind. What's the Alan Turing movie um, with? Uh, oh, the Batch? something in Venner. Yeah, the, the, the Imitation Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't yes. help at all. <laughs> so, I so uh, what him. happened to Alan Turing, who base who in many who saved thousands and thousands of allied troops lives and in many ways quickened the end of world war ii by cracking those codes uh he was gay and he got caught um like with a man outside a bar or something like that a few years after the war so the and, bad outweighed the good and 
<laughs> and Jesus Christ. And uh, <laughs> they sentenced him to this chemical castration. I'm sure it was a, a more barbaric form of some kind. I don't think they didn't. It was still chemical castration, but he ended up killing himself um, because of the side effects. And, 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 and of course, he was not a pedophile. He was just a gay adult man with another gay adult man trying to, you know, live with who he loved or, or you know, hook up with him or whatever. Uh, and, uh, and they, 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 he killed himself because of, because of that. That so sucks. I kind, of, I kind of a bad taste in my mouth about chemical castration yeah. because of the Alan Turing, uh, whole story and everything like that. But look, you know, if it, I don't know, I think if whenever you bring something back to a personal lower place, tea, like this, but depression is a low T thing. I think whenever you bring any like sort of thing like this to a personal place, whether it's abortion, we've talked about that before, how, how, how people's opinions on abortion change can change. A single man might be like, yeah, let's leave that on the books. But you get married and you're like, yeah, stop killing babies. It's not important anymore. Not, you know, I'm on the right, I'm on the right side of the fence now. We're all good. Um, but in the same way, I feel like if you got a fucking convicted pedophile in your neighborhood and you have like children who are right up his alley or whatever. You know, this guy went, he went to prison for like molesting 13 year old boys and you've got two boys, 12 and 14. You're like, you probably don't, you're probably not too tolerant. Yeah. Uh, and you're probably open to a lot of solutions. Yeah. That's well, it's what Alabama. Keep in mind, these are family. We got the, we got the government everywhere. I just, I, uh, that it's, is true. It's the same way that, like, I guess I could see this the same way I look at the death penalty. <clears throat> Where it's like, you see somebody who's a serial child rapist, and, like, viscerally, you're like, yeah, kill that person. There are ways to yeah. kill them. But then there's the leap of, like, okay, so do you want the government making this call? And well, then well, that's, why I'm, that's, that's why I'm ultimately against the death penalty, because it Taylor, gives too much power to the government. Counterpoint, this is reversible. You have to keep taking this to keep suppressing the T. And it's, it's mm -hmm. actually a thing, like, good behavior for five years, and they might back it off well then what if it are they going to extend it to rapists next like why not why not do it to all sex crimes it's just like they get everybody has such a hard on for protecting children uh or a like, hard on for protecting but like, <laughs> but how, or, like to dick's point like what if they make it oh you know that's three strikes of your burglarizing your t is way too high if we lower your lower your t you're not even gonna have the motivation to steal things you're just gonna yeah. do nothing like you wouldn't want to see it extend past that but when name one other time the government has like got stuck their foot in the door and then taken it way too far oh yeah you're no that's true they never do yeah. that they're very measured responsible <laughs> patriot act totally not a thing yeah i i don't know i don't know what i that's think a about great it. example of what you're talking about though i was like yeah. I, I know what happens but i can't think of one yeah yeah all the censorship and the internet to fucking gobbledygook like keeping track of everyone spying so yeah it, i don't know probably not good to give the government this much power but at the same time it'll probably it's gonna be popular because oh yeah on a surface level people go pedophiles fuck them yeah yeah so we're coming down pro pedophile on this goddamn right this is america, <laughs> <laughs> this is america. Guns, Jesus. freedom, and jail bait. That's America. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm proud to be in America. Where the police <laughs> stand for. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that slogan. That, that doesn't really... I don't, I, don't, I don't think it fits on a bumper sticker, for one thing. Man, people with like multiple sentences on a bumper sticker are the worst. Well, the, pe people with lots of bumper stickers are already the worst. Uh -huh. I don't care that you've been to Alaska seven times. Fuck off. Like you're just making your car look ugly. You know Do you what? Guys judge I don't people care about that. I'm actually secretly just jealous of your. Is it twenty three point six or twenty six point three? One of those that implies you finished a marathon. Yeah, you're just yeah, making me feel bad about me. So stop it. <laughs> yeah, I just don't. I, I just don't want anyone to see can buy one of those. <laughs> oh wow that's funny it might be funny to take a bunch of those like like the really high level ones like like i bet there's Everest. one for climbing i was gonna say there's probably one for like like completing k2 like unassisted yeah. or something like that and like like one of those ultra marathons it's like 200 and whatever 10 marathons is but it's like 230 miles or something but put them on fat people's cars yeah no that's right fat and old this is a good prank everyone <laughs> out there definitely Put things on other people's property <laughs> that are gonna damn it. Don't actually do that because no. I would be I would be livid if somebody put a bumper sticker on my car. That happened I hate to me. Bumper stickers. 
It had, my, my truck was uh, maybe two days old. And uh, I went to a paramotor thing, and they put this advertisement for their business. And it wasn't on the bumper. It was on the tailgate. Oh, oh. And it was like 18 inches by two feet. It was like a giant that. flipping sticker. Oh. And uh, what did it say on there? It was a, like a logo for a paramotor training said, facility. I love masturbating. And uh, I didn't want it on the tailgate of my truck. And you have to understand, the listeners know, maybe Dick does it. Like I had my previous truck for 15 years. I had kind of like delayed this gratification on a pretty extreme scale. So yeah. when I got this new truck, it was like kit to me. You know, the car Hasselhoff drove in. Like it, yeah. it drives itself. It stops for cars. It's the most amazing thing ever. It's a V8. <laughs> like the new V8s are 400 horsepower, which was insane to me. And uh, it, was, it was just a dream that I had finally granted myself. And then as it was like two days old, it, they put a giant sticker to advertise their oh. business on it. Yeah. But, I, but like they did it as like a prank though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so like a when real you saw, sticker. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but like when, they saw, when you saw it, they were there to be like, ah, gotcha. No. Uh, it was clear who it was. Like it was clear that it was one of these four or five people because it's a small company. There's no big paramotor companies. And uh, I was like deflated about it. It was like, I thought it wouldn't come off well. You know, we, we all went out to dinner. That's how I saw it. And uh, it was just like, what am I going to do about this? You know, I thought there'd be a residue left behind where like for the rest of my life, it would have like a dirt pattern, you know, like it would never be the same. It actually came off pretty well. Uh, me and... and uh, my friend's girlfriend, we went, went back to the truck and we just kind of like peeled off the sticker. And uh, uh, when I got back, one of them admitted to it. And because <sighs> I'm an asshole, <laughs> I, I, sug- I forget what I said. I was like, we should wrestle. But I was like willing to drop it and let it go or whatever. And he said, yes. He said, yes. And yes to drop it? Yes no. to wrestling. Yes to, to wrestling. <laughs> he was like, let's go. <laughs> And Did it, you put a sticker on my bumper, brother? It's the dumbest thing. I admit this. I, 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 I don't, I, I don't, I guess I just don't deal with problems very well. But I, and, and I was like seated in a lawn chair and I was like, ah, oh, yeah. And, uh, and so, he, so, so then you guys sort of playfully we did, around, we did, right? Like yes. you didn't. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know how the story gets retold, but the truth is, um, this guy was not a match for me. He had no training. And, um, so he went in for like this silly takedown or something, which I instantly stuffed. They're like, Woody picked him up four feet, which is true. But then I let him down softly. Like, like I, I controlled, oh. let him down because that was a thing we did in, in training too. Like we didn't slam people all the time. And, uh, and then from there, like, I just like, I sort of changed submission after submission without tightening any of them. Uh, like I took his back, sank a choke, didn't choke. Grabbed an arm bar, didn't tweak it. Did like a Kimura, didn't finish it. Like I just sort of didn't hurt him for a minute or two. And that was how it went. And how did you, did he actually take off the bumper sticker? We took off the bumper sticker. Me and the, I, I we went to a restaurant, me and this uh, girl who's my friend's girlfriend went back there and just sort of peeled it all off. Oh, well he should have had to you- do that. Yeah, but it was fine. You probably would have fucked that up, though. I'm glad I did it. You know. Yeah. I, I wish like they a had a beer bottle or something. Like I kind of get that it's like I see the funny in it, but I also see the like, dude, who puts a sticker on a man's brand new truck that like, yeah, it's shined it's weird. to advertise your business. Like that's that was even more socially inappropriate than my offer to wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you proved you could destroy him in a number of ways. That's how it went down, yeah. An arm bar that I don't tweak. <laughs> a joke that I, it's, I gave him one of these. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing. Like I don't, I'm don't trying to come off like some tough guy or something, but it, it, if you've had any grappling experience, it's like challenging someone who doesn't play guitar to a guitar, guitar competition. Like, obviously, the, the guy just doesn't have anything to bring to the table. One guy gets his guitar out, and the other one kind of like... Air guitar? No, 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 I like the air guitar guy. He's got spirit. Is that mega death? Yeah, it's... But that's how it went down. And afterwards, I was laughing, and he was laughing. Well, I hope it's not. Don't, like, Hasidic Jews have sex through a hole in a sheet? I no, that's a, that's a myth. 
Okay. Yeah, uh, I think we looked into that, but I'm taking my information from an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm where Larry David is going to hook up with a Hasidic uh, a Jew. And uh, and so he's asking his buddy about advice about this because he's never been with one before. And he's like, you know, they have sex through a hole in the sheet. And he's like, really? And they're going to hook up in a hotel, so you can't just cut a hole in the hotel sheets. So Larry brings his own sheet with a hole cut in it to the hotel. <laughs> and she's like, you believe that shit? He's like, what? Is he, you don't? No, fuck no, we don't. <laughs> Think you thought you were going to fuck me through that hole in a sheet? <laughs> 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 I guess now that I'm thinking about it more, yeah, that that's obviously not true. I mean, and I Google guess. just confirmed, oh, not good, true. Good, good. It that sounds like so depressing. That sounds like something the Mormons would be into because they wear that uh, that that like that fancy that magical underwear or whatever. Seems like yeah. they would want to be like. Well, Mormons have an insane amount of sex. They're like so about like let's whether not, they like you know, it or not, <laughs> and like. You'll like see like when I lived out in Idaho, like there were so many Mormons there that it'd be like you'd see someone who was like 23 years old, married to his 21 year old wife, and they'd have three babies. Yeah. Well, your girlfriend's uh, LDS, right? No. Her family's not LDS. Uh. Uh-uh. Your ex girlfriend's family. Oh. LDS. Yeah, they were. Yeah. That's right. My bad. Yeah. The, the only uh, uh, no beer at those gatherings was annoying. No, no strong drink for us, young man. We no find our drink. pep. We get our pep from the Lord. And if you guys need to know, hot tip: don't waste your money on beer at the Salt Lake City Airport because their Bud Light is three point two percent, but the price is the same. And they don't okay. tell you that when you're ordering. You just get nope. a watered down, weird tasting beer. So, nah. the ceremony where bloody nice. sheets are treated like a prize, apparently medieval, might also be myth. I was crazy. Well, I, I'm glad that it's not true. I, there, there's some yeah. things where it's just like I hope that doesn't actually exist out there in the world. And then this is one of them. This is one of them. I don't. I don't need that to be a thing in, in any culture. I there's enough people, fucked up things that are already out there that are actually true, like genital mutilation and that thing where the that those um, those those Jewish people during the 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 bris or whatever like suck the penis to make the bleeding stop or whatever. And yeah, you know, that's yeah. and the whole Catholic Church and. <laughs> Yeah, there's enough fucked up stuff out there. You don't have to make it up. You know what's really weird about the Catholic oh, Church to me that like like as a as a pro or as a Protestant like we'd hear about saints, but but like not really under personally. I didn't really understand what the, what was going on there. So so correct me if I'm wrong here, Taylor. I, as, as a theologian, <laughs> they believe that these saints are were were men or women born into this world who were holy in some way, blessed by God in some way, in, in some way into either performing a miracle or doing a miraculous thing. And, and now they reside in heaven, some sort of a tier below God and the angels, but above regular men, right? I think so. I think it'd be like being a heaven celebrity where people would be like, you'd be going around the, the mall in heaven and you'd see like, oh my God, that's St. Peter. Holy shit. Well, you my confusion. He, he, he shops here just like normal people. My confusion is that people will pray to specific saints. Mm. They'll yeah. wear those. So, I think it came from way back when they founded Catholicism. They combined the, the roots of Catholicism with the pagan gods and created this idea of sainthood to pray for. Because Mexicans, my grandma, my Mexican grandma has a saint for like every single thing that you can imagine yeah. missing missing car keys got a saint for that uh virus infected computer got a saint for that herpes two saints for that yeah. so they, <laughs> they took like the need to worship little mini gods in charge of things and just warped it into a religion that they thought was hip and cool yeah i i i, I, I that's saint fierce uh saint fieker the patron saint of people with stds yeah saint polycarp the, uh, that that's, looks boring. And if you do three, I think it's three miracles. They got to approve them. I, one of the most uh, interesting articles of, I don't know why I remember it forever. I read it a long time ago. It was a, it was an article about the guys in the Catholic Church who are in charge of canonizing saints, and they'll go around the world inspecting these miracles, like a statue has diarrhea or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> a woman in India comes back from the dead. 
um, you know, a girl on Tinder looks like her picture. Miracles yeah. <laughs> they'll show up and one guy, they, the article presented these two very different guys. One guy was like always pushing for the miracle to be real. So pretty much so he could get, generate interest in the church. And the other guy was super uh, hardcore. No, it's a miracle. He went around busting them for the church because like his personal philosophy was that there shouldn't there should only be like one miracle a millennia. Um, yeah, so it was really fascinating to see the internal power dynamics of uh, like marketing versus, you know, of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. It. That'd be man. Imagine an easier job. The disproving than getting miracles that go around the world and they're like, sir, this is a toast. It is just this so much like the Lord. And they're like, no, <laughs> bitch. Ah, <laughs> no. Well, all right. Well, toast. I'm going to need, I'm going to need five hours and some, you know, stuffed crust pizza to inspect this. And then you just <laughs> yeah. do whatever you want. Ah, yeah, that's not a miracle. Sorry, bitch. And then, but I'm going to need to take this cool toast. How many, like how many Jesus toasts do you think they've gotten a vault in there? But they're like, yeah, we're definitely taking this back with us to the Vatican. And they throw, my grandma, when she was trying to sell her house when I was a kid, when I was like eight, there's a patron saint of real estate, and she oh, buried man. it in the backyard. Mine too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> there you go. So, so just for fun, like the years and years ago on eBay, someone was selling toast that looked like the Virgin Mary. Like it, it was burnt into that. And I'm like, I'm going to Google eBay right now and see if maybe like – there's anyone selling shit like this. There are so many Virgin Mary toast creation devices that like it cracks me up. Yeah, I, I, I can <laughs> just if if you want toast with the Virgin Mary, <laughs> they've got like the little press, examples of the product. It goes on and on. <laughs> this one says holy toast on the packaging. <laughs> holy instead toast. of holy ghost. Oh wow. That's oh. funny. Remember the it's always sunny where the they had that stain on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> and the homeless guy pisses on it. They're charging <laughs> people to come look at the stain. They're trying to and they're trying to get D to manipulate cricket into blessing the stain. Uh, like Wait, everyone they, checks they, two they, or three boxes though. Like they end up coming around and saying, I'm okay that you AIDS fucked me without telling me. And he's guilty in the Italian restaurant now. Like or wherever they're sitting. That's where I'm imagining them at some romantic dinner. <laughs> you lost me a like, little bit. <laughs> and like that's it's like the Godfather. That's he hides the AIDS in the toilet. I have huh. to tell you something about my T cell count. <laughs> it's not ideal. <laughs> Is that what it T cell? I don't Probably know. Right. I, I know that's a buzzword, and I okay said it. Uh, yeah, I didn't know there was any controversy about whether or not you have to expose that you have AIDS. Exposed? Yeah, you obviously know, should have what to. What has happened here? No, you, because well, I can't they hear you guys. Uh, didn't I they decriminalize it? Maybe you can hear me. We do hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can hear you. I'll type that. But I can't hear anything, and my screen's frozen. Oh, you can hear me. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. You, and you can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we can see you. <laughs> we gotta way, get a new camera, man. Pre-show, like pre-show, we were all praising. Let me fuck around on my phone for a while. <laughs> pre-show, we were all praising how awesome Here Discord is. That's... Well, this is going to be a weird way to do the show because I can't hear or see anything. Um, this is now a podcast come on, of Kyle. three guys watching a one guy podcast. What do you mean by come <laughs> yeah. on, Kyle? I'm going to end the call and then come back. Yeah. I, I, yeah three guy podcast man, watching back. a one guy podcast. I think there's definitely an AIDS uh, telling controversy because I didn't California make it. Didn't they decriminalize it? I know if somebody did it, it was probably California, but I thought they decriminalized not telling somebody. You yeah, they, the they did. I think they like made it not a felony anymore. Yeah, something like that. That was bizarre. So you you're back. Now? Everything works. Yeah, I'm back, back now. Yeah, I'm back now. All right. Uh, the, uh, where did I end off at? I was talking about the diversity of the cast. We were talking. We were discussing the morality of not telling your boyfriend you have AIDS. Yeah, I feel like you got to tell him. Uh, that's important to know, or or her, anybody. You know, whether you're 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 in a, a straight or a gay relationship, whatever. Does I that like extend to herpes? Yeah. Uh, I don't think it should because, like, it's not transmittable, in my opinion. If, if there's not an outbreak, like, some I'm sure it's not transmittable, online. in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I explained this to my dating. doctor last week. <laughs> <laughs> I googled it and told him what was what. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't really worry about that. Like, if a girl had herpes and she didn't tell me, I wouldn't care. Um, I would lose outbreak, my I, fucking I be, mind. Uh, yeah, I would deal. be furious. <laughs> no big deal. It's no big deal. Uh, oh, it would be. 
Yeah, uh, it would no. be a huge no. deal. Not a big deal. I'd at end all. up on the fucking news. Uh huh. <laughs> 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 nah, I wouldn't give a shit. I wouldn't give a shit about herpes. That's not. That's that. That's a lame ass STD. That's one that like a pill just takes care of, uh, and a cheap pill at that. I don't like, think like, that's like, true. I think that's almost all the other ones. Uh, I mean, it doesn't cure it, but it prevents it from ever like being an issue. But it is like, transmutable when it's not even sure. If you say so, but I've never heard of that happening. Did you? So, you said transmutable. I don't think I even know. Transmissible that is that uh, what transmutable? Transmittable, I would have said. I like but I'm not even sure. Transmissible. Yeah. yeah. I don't. That's a I real don't know. George Bushism. Man, tra <laughs> transmissible. <laughs> the weapons of mass destruction were transmissible. That transmissible. Of disease or trait able to be passed on from one person or organism to another. There you go. Oh, so transmissible is the word. Yes. Okay. Any transmissible. Is transmittable right? That was the one I would have gone with. What about if you have a lot of credit card debt? Do you have to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's important. Or if it's not like, your car. If it's your anything dad's car. over Anything <laughs> over... I think if your credit card debt is more than 20% of your yearly income, you should probably be talking about that. Yeah. That means know. more to you than herpes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 100% it does. 100% it does. Absolutely. Based on no how much you made. Yeah, that, that's fucking insane. When that's because married. you don't know much about herpes. Like, like it's it, like, like, you know. How do you keep it that way? <laughs> yeah, good luck. You share it with me all many the times. How are cases <laughs> happening if it's not transmissible? Like, if it's not easily transmissible or hideable, how are all those new cases popping up? Because you, when you get an outbreak, it's totally transmittable. Because you've got so open you, sores on your 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 genitalia. Yeah, who's you fucking with open fucking sores? Open sores, or you think people are kind of hiding it and not telling people? So, and sneaking so them in one there. thing that happened to me was that I get cold sores, which is like like part a, a type of herpes, and I went down on a girl. Not when I had like the outbreak; like it wasn't like that big ugly sore. It was eighty percent gone. It was ninety five percent gone. I'm telling you, like like it had already healed, and like the scab was gone. And the pinkness had almost completely gone away. It was just like you'd have to, I'd have to get close in the mirror and be like, "Oh yeah, there used to be a thing here." Like there was no itching, there was no. It was regular skin. But I gave it to her, and it was on her vagina, and she had such an awful time with it. It was rough. Uh, I didn't look at it, but she described it to me in great detail, and it was enough to make me bring her frozen peas to sit on for a week. Ugh. Well, I guess she didn't have your good pill. She did not. She did not have the <laughs> pill. Um, she did not have the pill. She wasn't able to... Uh, to uh, but didn't she, you loan her one? Uh, at the time, I didn't have a prescription. Regularly. Now I do. Like last time I went to see my doctor, I was like, like I was getting, you know, everything I need. And uh, I was, you know, I need some of this. I need some of that. I need some of this. I want to have these things on hand. And I was like, oh, and I, I need my, my prescription for... Um, Is it Valtrex? Yeah. It's different than Valtrex. He, oh. There's one that's better now, uh, and Goo he gone. got me that one. I asked for Valtrex, <laughs> but, uh, but, but he hooked me up with a, a better one. one. And so now I've just got a bottle of that shit, and if I feel even the slightest tingle or itch, I take, like, not, I take a gram of this stuff, a thousand milligrams, and, like, no, no, no issue. There's, there's, it, it never it becomes more like, than a tingle in my lip. Like is so. that pimple drug Taylor took. It just oh Accutane. Accutane. Accutane for Taylor. Yeah. It's it's that did not get rid of solution. that will not get rid of herpes. It will just <laughs> no. get rid of pimples and but give I, you a lot of nosebleeds. Yeah, but the, the AIDS thing, I would definitely need to know that because that that, that has a lot of implications. <laughs> like like not the least of which is that you have an expensive drug that you are going to have to be purchasing for the rest of your life. You know, like 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 mm -hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure that if she is being treated for it or he, it, it, whether it's a gay or straight relationship and they're, um, undetectable, which was the situation in the TV show where they can't even detect the, 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 and I, I forgive my ignorance, but I, I don't quite understand the difference between HIV and AIDS. I know one is much worse than the other. I think HIV is the one you get and it can turn into AIDS, yeah. Yeah. um, it, yeah. which is much worse. Um, but I believe he's undetectable which made it very unlikely for him to transmit it to the other guy. He was also the bottom in the relationship, which is another factor that made it more difficult to transmit it. Also, they used a condom, another factor on top of that. And then the, the Secret Service agent was getting a prescription for what's called PrEP, P-R-E-P, which, which makes the likelihood of you receiving 
uh, the virus from someone much, much less. Like a bulletproof like, vest. It's like birth control for AIDS. Just rolling the dice. Thank you.